Greetings, garden fans, and welcome to a free clinic on organic pest prevention and control with Dr. Skanderson, brought to you by the Green Garden Group. The music you hear in the background is awesome. So let's get started. Uh, a lot of you guys ask questions of me about um, how to treat pests. And I spend a lot of my time helping people out here locally doing that. Because nothing shouts out, give me some help, like there's something eating away my bountiful glory of medicine. And in all that, I kind of want to impart for what i found to be the best way to control pests, you guys. And it is completely organic, which I know is a departure from uh, my normal gardening habits. Habits and habits. Habits is where the cabinets that I keep my habits in, you guys. So um, a lot of you guys who are veganic and organic gardeners might be thinking, fuck this guy with his synthetic-based fertilizers and only organic amendments. But you're probably not watching if you think that. But if you are, here's a totally organic method that I use um, to essentially eradicate the possibility of having pests and really, really putting huge amounts of stop gaps into my process so that um, disease and pest infestation just doesn't really happen. Um, and what this video really is covering is prevention and practices. I don't have some secret formula um, that I'm going to share with you guys that you can spray and it just takes care of everything. Um, what I am going to share is some hard-nosed practice, tried and true uh, ideas that I've used and um, has really allowed me to uh, prevent and eradicate disease and pests from my gr from my gardens. And uh, you know, so much of the problem I find really is that um, you know, best pra if you don't have best practices, um, this is just something that you kind of quote unquote deal with as a gardener. So uh, let's get started on a couple of the different ways that I uh, prevent and prevent and eradicate the possibility of having pests. First off. Um, has to do with cleanliness, you guys, so uh, very, very dirty on me because I like to touch things, I like to touch, it are my hands, and so I always make sure to have a box of uh, nitrile or latex gloves. Um, I wear them several times, I'm not like using it each and every time, this isn't surgery for me. Um, so I recycle it until they basically snap off my hand, but, uh, and it's like six bucks for a box of 50, 10 bucks for a box of uh, 100, and that's like at a box store online. You could get them way, way, way cheaper. Um, and really what you're doing is just putting a barrier between uh, your my filthy hands, which is touching everything, and my plants. Uh, for those directives in the garden, like the training, super cropping, bending, where uh, I'm actually doing some tissue fracturing and like a little more sensitivity, and like the naked flesh on plant feel, <laughs> um, in those circumstances, I use Purell, guys. I wash my hands and I use some hand sanitizer. Simple, kind of common sense stuff, but uh, it really, really, really makes a difference in uh, preventing disease and disease outbreaks from occurring. Um, so the other thing is, you guys, uh, like, <clears throat> kind of just in the way of creating a barrier between whatever it is that you're doing with the rest of your life and your life as a gardener or a caregiver to your plants, uh, oftentimes those people who need the most help occur or they appear as if they're like uh, rolling around in their street clothes and then going straight into their garden. Um, and, you know, taking whatever you're doing with your life, playing with your dogs, your guinea pigs, your cats, your, uh, you know, walking through tall grass of lime ticks and spider mites and then going straight into your garden, is, I mean, it's just kind of nuts so. So, um... Get a different change of clothes and or what I recommend is a Tyvek suit. That's what I wear. Um, the, something like this at a box store. It, they're like 7 to 11 bucks. If you work really, really, really hard in them, um, they last about three weeks to a month. And then just because they're, you know, made not out of cloth, they're like kind of that plasticky material. They tear, usually in the crotch, usually because big balls are hanging around down there. But, it, you know, it just it doesn't last. So you got to re uh, replace them every so often. And... Um, uh, if you buy them online at a commercial supply center, like Uline or something, um, you can get like 30 to 50 of them and the price falls way, way down, like 3 to $7, although you do have to buy quite a few of them. Um, and I want to point out that I always get the kind with the hood because it seems like cannabis growers like to grow their hair because growing your hair is easier than growing cannabis. And, um, you know, hair is awesome, but it carries with it a myriad of pathogens. 
So, um, pathogen. So, um, tuck it in. Get it under there. Get the Wook locks under the freaking hood, you guys. Um, and speaking of Wookies, I'm sure everybody everybody knows about the Wooks, right? Excuse me. Uh, the Wookies, you know, the warlocks out there. They're awesome, right? A lot of people have big old dank beards, and that is super heady, and I am down with a dank beard, you guys. But your plants are not down with your dank beard. So, um, cover them up, get yourself a mask. You can get these at a pharmacy. They're super cheap, um, and it'll just, again, create a super simple, super easy barrier. So, so far, yes, if you dress like a spaceman, you're well on your way to having a clean and healthy crop. Um, so, moving along, uh, another super, super dirty and filthy area my feet, because I'm always walking on them. Imagine that. So at every room that has a threshold and a door in this uh, facility, we have a separate pair of sandals so that each and every room has its own independent pair and you're never, uh, you know, cross-contaminating. So that, for instance, if one room, God forbid, got a powdery mildew outbreak um, and it has a lot of active mold spores, you're not walking all over that room trying to treat it and then walking into a perfectly healthy garden um, with, uh, you know, feet full of mold spores. So, um, $11 at Fred Meyer or so uh, for sandals or even cheaper, you can just get yourself, although not in the long run, you can get yourself basically disposable booties that cover whatever your foot gear ear is. So you can just slip those on and off if you so choose. But this really works well for me. And then in addition, speaking of footwear, because you are just constantly touching everything and probably the areas that collect more dirt, the floor, Something I use here is, this is, I believe it's a casserole dish, because people people use this to cook casserole, apparently. Um, I take one of those and a replacement mop head, and then one of uh, my gardener's best friend, bleach! The nice kind. Never, never get not nice bleach. Don't get the not nice. It says naughty bleach. You don't want that. It doesn't work. Get the nice bleach. And then I fill a solution of, you know, a couple of tablespoons of bleach and water up to right around this water level just to keep uh, the sponge nice and moist. And then um, I kind of secure this down here with uh, some super glue. And then just basically as I go into the garden, I wipe each foot. And then as I come out, I wipe each foot. So each foot's getting an ongoing coating of chlorine bleach just to ensure constant sterilization, constantly... Um, uh, creating stop gaps in the process of spreading disease and infestation. Um, and really, uh, that's where, the, that's so, 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 so huge because, a, you know, neem oil works. Azimax works. All, you know, there's a lot of Omri organic products out there that work. Um, it's just that so very often people are going to these great lengths. And by the way, it's a great cost very often. It's a great investment in time. And it can obviously it can affect your uh, crop, which can have a monetary impact. Um, but people will go to these great, 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 great lengths to keep organic uh, completely in their pest treatment. And, you know, they're, they're sitting there doing these unbelievable, like, you combine your freaking H2O2 with a pine cone and a heady block of some super moldy cheddar cheese. You melt that shit down. You add that right to your reservoir, bro, and it will take care of everything. And it's a tear of gypsy. You know, it's like, at some level, when you're going to those extents and then your dog's walking into your garden because the door's open and you're like, how's it going? It kind of is a shake my head sort of circumstance. So creating these stop gaps, creating these best case practices um, really allows your plant's natural immune systems and any type of preventative maintenance you do in terms of neem oil treatment, Azimax, whatever you choose, um, to work <laughs> for you as opposed to, you know, um, be a protection against you uh, who may be constantly reintroduced producing stuff. So, um, kind of what just, just, uh, uh want to reiterate the importance of that. And then as it pertains to introducing things, those things that are not in your control, the air in and out. So, uh, a lot of times people mention that, um, and this is kind of interesting. It's a little bit of an aside, but they mentioned that like, oh, well, they're going to wait to add CO2 to their garden until their room is sealed. And, um, you know, most smart timers have, uh, you know, the ability to, 
rate your CO2 so that if you're exhausting heat, you're not wasting CO2. And it just kind of begs the larger question, how much air intake are these gardens running? And I know there's some gardens that have huge air intakes, but in most indoor garden facilities, um, air and heat is balanced enough that the intake can be, you know, minimized. So, um, uh, the point being, how much airflow do you have? How much lack of uh, sealing is going on that you're concerned that the CO2 level is so inefficient? My, the thing that crops up for me about that situation is how much like excessive air that's carrying with it spores, mold, uh, eggs, bugs, anything like that, particles, is coming into your garden. And I know, speaking personally, uh, I, I run sealed rooms, but the fact that I seal the room is only incidental to whether or not I have an intake outtake or not. Either way, all seams of the garden I recommend treating and controlling as much air inflow uh, or unwanted air intake as you can. And these are a couple simple products with which to do that. So uh, spray foam can be your best friend. It is uh, almost watertight, which I've tested, unfortunately. Um, it's not super cheap, but it is uh, cost effective, super easy to apply, um, and it works really well as a barrier uh, against water, and it's fairly air secure, and uh, it does an excellent job insulating. Uh, uh, another alternative is just using some good heavy grade ducting tape. Um, it's definitely more cost effective, works just as well. It does require some maintenance because uh, depending on the room you're running it in, if there's a lot of humidity, heat, temperature changes, it can bubble and lose its... Uh, it's adhesive property, but you need to get uh, a good ducting tape, not duct tape, you know, one with a backing that you peel off to so that the, the glue is on there. Um, and then, you know, lastly, just some weather stripping, you know, add some weather stripping to your doors that are going in and control some of that air. It makes a huge, huge, huge difference um, in, in all the gardens. Like, you know, when I, I run sealed rooms and can really monitor how much intake outtake I get uh, by through the digitally monitored uh, CO2. So you can really see as the room gets more and more sealed how, uh, how uh, the efficiency improves of preserving that CO2. I'll be that, you're talking about 10 or 20%, you guys. So definitely, in my experience, you can benefit from adding CO2 even if you're running an open room because CO2 is so huge um, in my experience. So uh, moving right along, another thing. You guys, that's a dust buster. If I could insert this into a quiver and wear it on my back, I would. Anyone who builds quivers out there, hit me up. Uh, this I got on eBay, used. I've never had any problems with it. It's 14.4 volts rechargeable, which is okay. Um, I have fairly uh, flexible uh, or available electrical outlets, so I'm probably going to switch to a corded one so I can get the extra power associated. But this one is really great, um, and it does work. And every time I go into the garden, I use it. So I'm sucking up a particle, a hair, uh, a little piece of leaf, a uh, uh, speckle of hydrogen, whatever it is. I'm getting something that was hanging out in the garden that shouldn't be inside of this and removed. Um, and then as another tip, you guys... Some clean wipes. Every time I bring... The other great thing about this, as opposed to like a shop vac or something, super easy to clean. Every time I bring in a foreign object to the garden, I want to wipe it down with um, an antibacterial, antiviral uh, type of um, wipe. So something like that is what I choose. Uh, you know, sponges and stuff soak in Fizan 20, another super cheap, great solution. Um, but, you know, just... This was again a thirty or forty dollar solution to really keeping things super duper clean and avoiding uh, the, those possibilities of infestation happening. And last thing I want to bring up is um, just kind of, and this is available for some gardeners, but this really is a design thing, which is build yourself a pre room to any door that is entering directly into a garden. So what I mean by that is. Every room uh, that we have here, for instance, the room that we're in, this is an in-between room between three gardens. There's a door to one garden, there's the door to another garden right there, and there's a door to a third garden right there. So um, this air that we're in right here is treated with a HEPA filter as well as fungicidal lamps so that any time we're opening these doors, um, we can assure that the air that's interchanging between this room and the garden is at least cleaned to a... a, a a, a large extent and treated um, and even if that means just framing out a small room immediately outside the door of your garden if it's just like a one-shot deal um, you know 
I've seen people do that, and it's just basically like a closet that's tall enough for somebody to stand in, and you use that space, and you treat it with HEPA filter and a fungicidal lamp, which, you know, restaurants use in bathrooms and things like that. It just basically kills spores and mold in the air. And it just gives you a place to kind of get into your garden mode, uh, put on your suit, put on your, uh, your gloves, get on your sandals if you're, uh, you know, if you need, get your shit together basically, uh, book to write down what you're doing, um, and you're kind of nice and clean, and everything in there is clean, and you're really minimizing the exchange between uh, the pathogens that we are constantly spreading around and your garden. So I hope that these tips for you guys have been a little bit helpful in the way of avoiding uh, pest infestation altogether. And I can assure you that using any and all of these tips is completely heady, completely organic, completely free range, and will never impart heavy metals to your nugs, can be used to treat any one of a degree of symptoms, and overall is an organic and very safe method. Since I started using this, you guys, uh, uh, at 100%, I haven't had an infestation. You know, knock on wood. But haven't had anything, um, and that's like going on over a year here, and that's with multiple gardens running, with a minimum of two flower rooms running simultaneous. So, it's organic and it works, you guys. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up. Thanks for all the subs, thanks for all the views. It's always a pleasure. Bringing you free clinics with Dr. Skanderson. Thanks for stopping by and happy gardening.